Okay, I'm recording the slide deck part, but after that, when we come to the questions part, I will stop the recording and we can take the questions of the uh, recording because it's actually getting recorded to the cloud. So uh, quickly coming back, um, be kind to everyone when you are reaching out to people because we are doing all of the work that we are doing for the project on volunteers, as volunteers. Um, and so um, people have other responsibilities, other priorities as well. What you uh, get out of shadowing is what you put in, which basically is uh, brings us to this slide. What I understand by this is if you are a shadow, um, leverage that position, ask a lot of questions, make yourself known in the release team, make yourself known in the community by joining uh, not just the release team meetings, maybe SIG release meetings or other SIGs that you are interested in, join those meetings, join slacks of different uh, groups that you uh, want to participate in, just make, make yourself known there uh, or provide feedback whenever you are asked for a feedback. Uh, one of the examples that, that I used in the morning call was um, like feedback about uh, meeting times or feedback about whether a certain uh, process in a release team is working or not working. Usually we, uh, when such a question is asked to us uh, on the release team meetings, we, uh, even I have done that in the past, we tend to stay silent and the silence is taken as a positive or a yes, which is usually not the case. Um, people might have uh, different uh, thought process about a certain thing, but they are silent. Maybe they are hesitant to speak out on the call. Uh, and uh, maybe it's working fine for them, or maybe it's not working fine for them. Maybe they have different uh, ways to, to do the same thing. Um, silence does not give out any of those things. So if you are if you can provide feedback vocally uh, by talking out loud on mic or writing that in uh, chat or DMing uh, your role lead, uh, release lead, EA, anybody, uh, that's going to help uh, improve the process and also improve your uh, experience as a shadow. Also understand what your uh, what are your expectations uh, as a shadow in a certain role. If you are not um, clear about your expectations, for example, your lead is assigning you some tasks and you don't know how to perform them uh, properly, you have doubts, please ask questions. If your role lead is not able to answer them, please raise them. Please ask the same questions in SIG release channel or uh, reach out to your release lead um, or ask your role lead if they are not able to answer it uh, because of any reasons. Maybe they don't have context about that particular scenario. Ask them to uh, get some help to you. Uh, or just reach out to anybody that you are comfortable to talk to in the community. But uh, make sure that you have proper guidance. You, uh, you have all the resources. Um, that you need to do your job properly. And if that's not the case, uh, you provide feedback. So all of these work hand in hand. Um, and if you're doing all of this, if you're putting in a lot of effort, you, if you're making yourself known, if you're making so yourself available when there is a requirement, uh, you will also get more and more opportunity. You will also get more and more uh, incentives, whatever comes as part of doing those work. Um, you, you can. Uh, that means you can volunteer as much time as your bandwidth permits. Um, you can also attend not just the release team meetings, but SIG release meetings, which happen on Tuesdays. They also have two placeholders for uh, different time zones. Uh, one is APAC. That's not. Uh, uh, I think not a time a friendly time for uh, Australia and New Zealand, but. I think the APAC, India, Europe uh, people, they can join those meetings. And then there is a US one as well. Uh, each of those meetings happen bi-weekly. So APAC meeting happen uh, bi-weekly and then US occurrence happen bi-weekly. 
join those meetings and uh, learn about what is there outside the release cycles. And uh, also, if you are uh, as a shadow getting involved with other SIGs, other areas in the project, uh, talk to other people outside the release cycle, ask them questions also about what uh, other people are doing um, and look out for opportunities there. And finally, there are always conferences. If you can make uh, to one of those conferences, KubeCon, uh, KubeCon Contributor Summit, which is like a co-located event or an event that happens during the KubeCon Europe and North America or any other Kubernetes events like KCDs, Cube Days, or Linux Foundation events. If you can make one of those uh, events, meet other people, meet, try if other fellow release team members or Kubernetes project members are joining, um, just say hi and have a conversation with them there. All of this will make you known in the community and uh, you can talk to people, you can let them know what are you looking forward to um, so that whenever they have an opportunity, they can come back to you because they know that you can provide them some help on that particular thing. So that's how you can make the most out of your shadowing. This is entirely how the amount of effort you put into during, uh, put into your shadowing experience during these three months um, is really equivalent to what you are going to get out of that. Um, improvements are always welcome on the release team in uh, our processes during a release cycle, particular release cycle. Um, uh, so how to provide those feedback on improvements. Um, if you think that you have a improvement, you have a suggestion to make about your particular role, start by talking to your role lead. Um, if you think uh, you want to discuss it with the wider release team during a release cycle, uh, talk about those thing, uh, those suggestions, those feedback during a release team meeting. Um, you can basically uh, direct those questions to your role lead, release lead, or uh, emeritus advisor. And even if you think you just want to uh, maybe like have that uh, conversation with even wider group not the 40 people on the release team, but maybe 100 uh, and 200 people or maybe thousands of people we have in the community, direct a question to any of the Slack channels, uh, SIG release, SIG contribux, wherever you feel comfortable asking. Uh, all of those improvements, uh, suggestions on the improvements, feedback on anything that's not working fine is always welcome. Uh, I can't promise, or I think nobody can promise that we, will come to that suggestion right away or whatever suggestion uh, that anybody is making would be accepted but whether it will be considered or not yes uh, whether something will be done to make it better for you yes so please 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 if you have any feedback suggestions um, give them to anybody that you feel comfortable um, talking to Okay, what happens after a release cycle? Uh, I think a lot of people on the call are new to the release cycle and there are people already uh, who have done many releases in different positions. So uh, we have examples. One of the things that happened after uh, a release cycle uh, as a shadow, you can always come back on the release cycle, uh, maybe doing a shadow role again on the same team maybe doing a shadow role again on a different team if you want to learn more about uh, cross uh, roles. If you think you did a shadow role during a release cycle and you are ready to be a lead um, on the next release cycle, you can come back as a lead. And once you have uh, led a role, uh, it goes on and on. You can come back as a release lead shadow. Um, eventually becoming a release lead and emeritus advisor and even taking on other roles. Um, what I want to specify here is, uh, I think this was raised during the morning thing, morning uh, discussion as well. Does um, somebody raise, uh, somebody mentioned that if I'm doing twice shadow, uh, 
which means i'm eligible to become a lead third time um so doing a shadow on a particular single role x time uh, that is not the criteria that x time could be just one time doing a shadow or it could be two times three times depending on how many times you have done um, that particular role as a shadow and you are comfortable taking on the lead role you um, are aware of all the diff- extra processes that a lead does and your role lead also feel the same about you um, you are ready to lead even after a single release or you are may be ready to or you need like multiple cycles of shadowing um so it depends it it entirely depends on a um, particular shadow experience um what is uh what if you what if you have um done a release cycle or multiple release cycle and you want to try something else not not in the release cycle but like um places around it uh, or areas around it one of the things that happens mostly um, if you are a release lead or you have done a equivalent um, experience on like been on the release lead shadow multiple times or uh, even a role lead um, and you are doing other work in the uh, other areas of the project and you are known in the community and uh, people can put some trust in you then uh, release manager associate is another position which uh, comes under another sub project of sig release called release engineering and that release engineering group is the one uh, the set of people who actually cut the releases who actually do the technical work of maintaining the tools that we use to uh, create release tags and prepare artifacts and everything that goes into cutting a actual release um we also have a role called branch manager uh in during our a release cycle in that 40 people group that branch manager the person who becomes a branch manager for a release cycle comes from the release engineering group uh, so we um, as ea uh, emeritus advisor or release lead we don't uh, nominate anyone to become a branch manager that branch ma- manager uh, role is filled by somebody who is already a release manager associate or have volunteered to become one so you can try that role and if you just if you are you have spent enough time on sig release and you realize that's not just the only place where you want to spend time and you want to explore other areas of the project feel free to uh, go and join meetings and other forums um and discussions of any other sig for example um sig docs if you are a docs team and that does not have to be just docs team shadows anybody in the release team but i i'm talking about docs because a docs during a release cycle work with sig docs so if you find opportunities in sig docs you can um go and take those opportunities sig contrabix is a very cross very uh um uh, over the project sig that 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 uh works with every other sig in the project so if you find out opportunities in sig contrabix you can also uh, participate there and there are other areas in sig release as well um those are the three example written here but sig api machinery apps depending on what you really want to uh, do and are interested in exploring you can go out uh, and take any of those uh, uh the work in any of those groups that is what uh, as a shadow you can explore as next opportunities uh, what after uh, what you from the logistics side what to expect after a release cycle that's something that i will send out so i'll send out a feedback form to all the shadows uh, and all the ro- role leads as well after uh, actually twice during a release there is a mid uh, cycle survey and end and cycle survey and if you want to provide feedback any suggestions um maybe uh, inform the release team about your um, time availability if you have if you think there is something planned in the next half of the release cycle uh, and you are not going to be available for so and so time uh, all those kind of uh feedback or all those kind of 
um notifications you can provide that in feedback survey so that people know where, uh, where you are needing some help and um they can provide you help that's not the only place to do that kind of uh, conversation you can always dm or uh, ping any of the release leads or <clears throat> uh, which also includes now grace and cat cost group uh, who are uh, our release sig release sub project uh, leads for release team um with that so this is what i was talking about if something comes up for example uh, and you have for example private emergencies you have something coming up on your work um and you are not able to uh, work for a week for more than a week or sometime you just have to uh, give up on your shadow responsibilities for a certain cycle um, in the middle somewhere just let people know just let your role lead know release lead know emeritus advisor know so that um they are they understand why you are not able to perform your uh, uh, duties and they can make proper arrangements for, for you for, if it is for example you are unavailable for a week you can let your role lead know and they can assign that time pressing task to other shadows and you can swap your responsibilities for that shadow um whenever you are available but if it's more than multiple uh, weeks or you have to drop out in the middle you can let emeritus advisor or release lead know so that they they know that you did it for a reason and you are still interested to come back on the release cycle so they can help um you out in the um, next release cycles for example so do that uh, where you can provide that uh, information you can reach out directly to your role lead emeritus advisor release team lead if you are not comfortable talking to anyone on the release team talk to the sig release chairs uh, or grace and cat cosgrove they are also the people to talk about any release team stuff uh, you can also talk about any planned uh, uh, such occurrences in during a mid cycle shadow survey or um, maybe you can bring up if something did not work out properly and you had some issues but you are not able to inform release retro is the final place to bring that at the end of a release cycle these are some resources for shadows i think you have already gone through these uh, rule handbooks but i'll provide this deck um, tomorrow so uh, what's what should be going on now and if any of these things uh, have not already happened for you uh, let me know so that uh, i can make sure that that is the case now so at this point by this point i think we are uh, four weeks into the release cycle now you should be in close contact with your uh, role lead and everyone on your uh, uh, team sub team which means the shadows you have finished reading the handbook of your role and you are familiar with whatever are your uh, are your day to day responsibilities your role lead has um, onboarded you with a session you you uh, your role lead had maybe multiple onboarding session depending on what uh, roles uh, they have scheduled these sessions and you are well onboarded you have all the guidance mentorship to get started uh, also you are attending the release team meetings uh, whether apac uh, the us ones depending on the time zones and you are added to um, all the google groups the github teams anything that is required to perform your duties and also you are an org member if none of this is uh, true any of these items is missing for any one of you on the call um, let me know and we'll make sure that happens um quickly because i think we are almost uh after 20 30 minutes so kubernetes uh in total the kubernetes whole project is in uh, divided into sub groups um uh, called special interest groups or working groups as well but special interest group is the bigger biggest division um what a special interest group is um it's a group of people in the community who work 
uh, who have similar interests, who have uh, who are working on one or a collected a uh, I mean, a group of items, a group of uh, components, which uh, which have same similar interest for the project. So, for example, SIG release is one of the SIGs out of this 24 SIGs, uh, which deals with everything related to Kubernetes SIGs. That could be this release team, uh, the tools, the processes, the security aspect of uh, releases and everything that uh, has to do with release is uh, handled by people in SIG release and so on. So each of those SIG uh, has their different charter that explain what area they own. Um, I will highly, highly encourage the new shadows and everyone who are already not aware about Kubernetes community repo to bookmark that link and go through the content of that repository to understand how the Kubernetes project is organized into these different parts. Um, for time's sake, I'll come to this side, this slide, where you can see uh, a big, big picture of all the uh, release SIGs we have. Uh, some of the SIGs work with all other SIGs and their project wide. They are cross sectional, like architecture, contributor experience, docs, release, testing, and so on. They don't own one area, but they have to work with all of the SIGs below uh, to make sure, for example, docs, docs team, docs SIG will work with all of the SIGs to help them with the documentation of any any feature, any work that happens during uh, inside or any of these SIGs. Release uh, on the same uh, will deal with releasing any of the artifacts that are created by um, these SIGs and so on. And then we have horizontal and vertical SIGs. Uh, this is like a T. Some of this, uh, these SIGs are um, across the pro project and some of these SIGs are vertical um, and uh, focuses on one single co component. Um, I'll also touch upon this term called KEP or enhancements that we use a lot uh, during a release cycle. Um, so what are caps or this, the other word that we use um, most times is enhancements. Um, so any, uh, any feature, any change, any major change that uh, anyone from the Kubernetes community, if they want to introduce into the Kubernetes code base, they have to follow a certain process uh, to doc first starting with the documentation, a proper documentation, laying down what is the motivation behind that particular change. Uh, what are they planning? If this change is very big and major, uh, the, they have to bring that change to the project in multiple phases, like uh, start with the alpha where we are having zero or minimum um, impact to the end user, then we we make we soak it in for some cycles in alpha, and then uh, remove that, uh, make it available by default, so um, it it is a little bit more stable. And finally, once we have gotten all feedback, uh, we can actually make it stable in JS. So any major change, any big change happening to the project. Uh, you start with documenting it, documenting uh, all of the, all documenting the motivation, documenting what you aim to release or what you aim to work on as part of different phases of its implementation. Uh, what could be in the potential impacts? Um, any prior art, anything that has already been done, and more. So uh, we have a proper template for these proposals and any, any uh, area, anybody as an individual contributor to the project or somebody uh, who's contributing or working on something as part of a SIG, they have to write that document and then um, discuss it with the wider community. Uh, and we call that document an enhancement, a document that talks about anything, a new feature, a removal or deprecation or um, major change in general. So 
each of these enhancements actually have to be owned by one or other SIG or maybe multiple SIGs so that uh, these proposals uh, get proper review, get proper approvals in place before any implementation starts. So Kep, uh, Kubernetes enhancement proposal KEPs are just uh, design documents or implementation um, details uh, before anything is actually implemented. And where to find these documents? Uh, this is the place git.gators.io slash enhancements that slash KEPs, uh, which is the alias for uh, github.com slash Kubernetes slash enhancements repo. That is the home for all the design proposals or KEPs that have already uh, implemented and uh, included into the Kubernetes project or maybe even more design proposals that were included at some point later on deprecated, removed. So you can find prior art there. Also, uh, you can follow along with what is going to be included as part of this release cycle. So um, all that design uh, feature, uh, design related discussions uh, about any major change could be a feature deprecation removal. Uh, the process followed by them is called um, CAP or a Kubernetes enhancement proposal, which is basically you are proposing it to the community and asking for feedback before making, actually making that change. Uh, this is one of this is one of the example of one of those proposal where uh, you have a readme document and uh, this is a screenshot not the whole copy where you can see that whole table of contents where you start with the summary motivation giving goals and what is out of the scope with a proper proposal uh, that goes into details but not really technical implementation and um, other things like, are you considering tests or what tests, if yes. And then the graduation criteria for each phase of that particular uh, proposal. Uh, what are you going to do as part of that each of those phases? There is also a meta file attached to these uh, proposals called kep.yaml, which, um, co which contains information about which SIG owns this particular proposal, for example, or uh, what multiple SIGs maybe, or who are the authors of this proposal, um, who are the people who have been already contacted to be reviewers or approvals. Um, it also provides information of what is the current state of that particular proposal, like if, it's, if it is alpha in a certain release cycle or uh, targeting beta, uh, already GR, all the all those kind of like, what is the state or currently for that particular proposal you can get those information in this meta file. Um, quickly running the release cycle. Um, our release cycle is actually a 15 week cycle, uh, sometimes 14, 15, depending on uh, which cycle of the year we are talking about. And it is divided into a group of weeks where a lot of different uh, milestones happen for a release. And right now we are almost uh, at this part where we are finishing the enhancements collection. So we are finishing uh, asking people to finish their cap proposal and uh, opt in for a certain release cycle, uh, which is 131 for this cycle. And once we are past this enhancement collection and we have a list of all the enhancements that have uh, opted in that they want to uh, code implement during this release cycle, uh, will put up enhancements freeze and that's when we will not uh, track any more enhancements. The already tracked list of enhancements would be then taken on by other parts of the release team, uh, for example, docs, comms, uh, and so on. Uh, they will then work on that uh, list of enhancements during the entire release cycle and reach out to authors for different requirements to make sure uh, we have all documentations in place. We have blogs in place if any enhancement require writing a blog, um, tests in place and everything. Uh, so that happens, uh, that 
finalizing the list of all features all enhancements for a certain release happens at enhancements freeze uh, and that's going to happen for us in uh, i think two days time we are going to reach our enhancements freeze milestone followed by that there is a few weeks of um, code implementation time once the enhancement list of enhancements is frozen uh, now the ones that actually made in to the enhancements freeze milestone, all of those caps needs to start working on their code implementation. So about four weeks or eight, um, the, however many weeks we have between week four uh, to week 12, eight, eight um, uh, month and a half, people will actually work on implementing the code. And that's when we will also start uh, creating tags, the very early preliminary uh, release cuts uh, like alpha, or some betas as well, so that so that community, the end users, they can start uh, consuming the artifacts of this release or the soon to be artifacts of 131 release as early as possible and can provide feedback. Um, and we can uh, take those feedbacks and loop back in. Um, so that happens for about one and a half months. Uh, meanwhile, um, so uh, till enhancements freeze, it's mostly enhancements team working. But after this, uh, every other team also um, have their roles uh, and resp the responsibilities in place. Uh, docs team will start reaching out to all the opted in enhancements for docs requirement. Release signal will start working on uh, creating the release notes. Uh, sorry, release notes will, our team will start uh, working on creating the release notes for all the alpha, beta tags that we are cutting in the meantime. Release signal will keep an eye on our testing pipelines uh, so that we have a proper signal for all those, all of these release cuts and so on. Um, and at about week 12, um, about one and a half months later, uh, we'll have a code freeze. That's when all of the enhancements that had opted in at by week four uh, or by this enhancements freeze milestone, uh, the enhancements team will reach out to all of them and make sure the code is actually implemented and merged into Kubernetes slash Kubernetes repo. Uh, and we put a freeze on KK repo. That is after code freeze, nothing can be merged, no code, no more code, uh, feature related code can go in um, Kubernetes slash Kubernetes repo. Um, and we um, modify all our automation so that that actually happens. Um, uh, once code freeze is in place, we'll almost aim at our final release uh, artifact. So we'll start cutting our release candidates, the RC0, RC1, and also soak in all the changes that have already been merged into master of Kubernetes. Kubernetes will check, will keep an eye on, on the tests. The, the tests are going green and nothing is failing. At this point, if a test is failing, a fix for that can go back in uh, Kubernetes slash Kubernetes master um, and then the release branch but other changes uh, won't be accepted. And if everything is all good by week 13, uh, we'll finally have the uh, release in week 14 or week 15, depending on our target release date. Um, and once we have our final 131.0 tag cut, we'll release the code freeze from KK and people can then start working on a new release cycle, uh, merging um, their code in KK master again. Uh, and after the releases, the comms team actually uh, release the feature blogs for all the features that uh, have created a blog uh, and was uh, worked upon during this 131 release cycle. Um, this is the release, how the release team looks like. It's about 40 people team uh, across different uh, roles. Um, and I think I'll leave at that. Uh, most of these are uh, talking about different roles. So um, I will stop sharing and also stop recording and we can take